Bwana asifiwe. Bwana asifiwe tena. Na sema tuketi sasa. I will request a pastor's interpreter to interpret for me. Na wale wale sema unakaa left, huko ndio left eh. Bwana asifiwe. Na shukuru Mungu sana hata mimi mungenisifu natoka Kajiado. <laughs> uh, binadamu wanapenda sifa lakini be careful with sifa. Eh uh, tumtukuze Mungu kila wakati. Amen. Kwa sababu yeye ndio wetu. Na yeye ndiye atatusaidia sisi Bwana asifiwe. Uh, standing before here Mama mbele yenu is what we call in English extremely unprecedented. Ah ni jambo ambalo tunasema katika Kiingereza kwamba ni jambo lisilo la kawaida. Ah especially for me. Ah hasa sana kwangu. I was born in a priesthood family. Ah alizaliwa katika nyumba ya ukuhani. My father was a pastor when I was being born. Babake alikuwa mchungaji alipokuwa akizaliwa. I was raised for a long time when he's a pastor. Alikuzwa kitambo akiwa mchungaji. He later became a bishop when I'm in high school. So we lived in uh, like a church in the house. But you know as a son of a pastor you think you will go to heaven because your father is a pastor. But from my research I think many children of pastors in my research they don't uh, behave like their father. Uh, Maybe that's why I have suffered for a while. <laughs> I went to school in Nyeri. Nilienda shuleni kule Nyeri. My college a diploma course in Nyeri. Ah uh, kule katika chuo cha kati kule Nyeri. Then I came to Kenyatta University here for a degree course. Akaja hapa Kenyatta chuo kikuu kwa degree and i was very happy to go there because i was now far away from my parents alifurahia sana kwa sababu alikuwa mbali sana na wazazi wake because we were punished if you go you don't go to church kwa sababu tulipigwa usipoenda kanisani not because we are saved really si kwa but because our father is the one at the helm of affairs kwa sababu baba yetu yeye ndio kiongozi pale mbele and when i came to nairobi I never went to church seriously. Because uh, I was not very sure what pastors were doing. I never believed so much. I wanted a different life. Different from where I was raised up. But uh, in many instances I realized that the Lord was guiding me to a particular path. And he has done a lot. Strange things. And others very good. I have a wife and a child. My second born child died. And uh, it was a very humiliating moment in my life. I remember going to Kenyatta Hospital. At the middle of the night. And my wife was uh, sick and my son was also very sick. Both of them were admitted. My son was in the ICU. And my wife was in the normal ward. And I was wondering what is happening. I came to realize later that I was to identify my identity. That is why right now I choose the theme identify your identity. Identify your identity. 
kutambulisha ama kugundua kitambulisho chako your identity can be realized through a process the way pastor says time and again kitambulisho chako kinaweza gunduliwa kupitia hatua jinsi mchungaji alivyosema and you may go through a very painful moment to identify your identity na unaweza pitia hali ngumu kugundua kitambulisho chako i remember when my wife was still very sick and my son extremely sick ila kumbuka wakati mke wangu alikuwa mgonjwa na mtoto alikuwa mgonjwa zaidi i went to the women ward in kenyata nilienda katika chumba cha wanawake ile ward ya wanawake kenyata and our time was over wakati ulikuwa umeisha well, our time for visiting was wakati over wakati wa kutembelea wagonjwa ulikuwa umeisha when i was about to leave wakati nilipokuwa karibu niondoke my wife started convulsing ah uh, mke wangu akaanza kuwa mgonjwa zaidi Kuzimia. like kuzimia yeah, but kuzimia. if you have uh, watched somebody possessed with uh, some spirits uh-huh. there is how they behave kama unaona mtu amepagama na mapema it's like the bone is cracking the muscles are coming together eh anaanza kutetemeka nikana kwamba mifupa inapasuka na nini and i told the doctors let me go back nikamwambia daktari wacha nirudi and i remember touching her nikakumbuka kumguza by her mouth kwa mdomo wake and she stopped convulsing na kule kuanza kuzimia kukaisha it was a miracle because i told you in nairobi i used to think that going to church is a waste of time let me say that ilikuwa miujiza sana nilipokugundua kwamba kukua nairobi kwamba kwenda kanisani ni jambo tu ambalo ni la jaba ama adithi za kawaida so my wife was in the ward and my son later died mke wangu alikuwa katika wodi na mtoto baadaye akafa She was now to leave the hospital. Ilikabidi kwamba aondoke hospitalini and aid me to prepare for the burial. Na nisaidie mimi kuandaa mazishi. So akapona abruptly. Na akapona tu kwa haraka sana. Ikabidi apone, hakupona, alipona tu kwa sababu ya hali. Ilibidi apone kwa sababu ya hali. She was not cleared. Wakuwa wamemwachilia kuondoka katika hospitali but she came out and we organized for the burial. Lakini alikuja tukatengeneza, tukaandaa mazishi. After the burial baada ya mazishi around one month or so muda wa mwezi mmoja au zaidi she became again extremely sick akawa tena mgonjwa zaidi so i was again to go back to the hospital with her ikawa tena arudi hospitalini pamoja na yeye and uh, at the casualty if you have gone there but mahali pa casualty kama mwaingia pale in a normal public hospital katika hospitali zetu za umma the experience is not good ah uh, ma- pale mahali si pazuri i was there with my son alone at the middle of the night nilikuwa pale na mtoto wangu katikati ya usiku the child wants to sleep the mother is very sick and nobody is helping you mtoto anataka alale mama ni mgonjwa na hamna mtu anakusaidia i suffered niliumia sana but by god's grace kindi kwa neema yake mungu we went to the ward for around Three to four weeks nilipitia tunaenda kwa wodi kwa muda wa wiki tano au wiki tatu ama nne and she recovered na baadaye akapona she fully recovered akapata nafu and she's okay now sasa yuko sawa i i bought a car after that nikanunua gari baada ya hayo yote and uh, you know i told you i rarely went to church those days nikamwambia kwamba wakati huo ilikuwa nadra sana mimi kuingia kanisani and i was driving i'm a good driver i think mimi ninaendesha gari mimi ni dereva mzuri sana i've gone to busia i've gone to mombasa by myself nimeenda busia mombasa mimi mwenyewe nikiendesha gari but i was surprised sana i was astonished nilikashangazwa sana i got into an accident in a very very smooth road nikaingia katika ajali kwa barabara ambayo imenyooka sana just here in githrai 44 hapa githrai 44 hapo and people are very 45 sorry githrai 45 and people are very funny watu ni wajabu sana i am in extreme pain mimi ninapitia uchungu mkali between the driver's seat and the steering katikati ya kiti cha dereva i don't know if i can stand sijui naweza simama but they stole my phone lakini wakaiba simu yangu the person who stole my phone told me brother because i was conscious i could see him kwa sababu nilikuwa ninaumia lakini ningemuona but a pastor will tell you where i come from you don't cry especially when people are watching especially a man mahali ambapo ninatoka mwanaume si astahili kulia i went through a certain circumcision from the bukusu community in western kenya alipitia tohara fulani kupita kutokea kwa bukusu kule kenya and we were told you don't cry especially when women are watching kaambiwa kwamba usilie hasa wanawake wakikuona so i saw people crying outside but i'm telling them i will struggle I'm okay kuna watu wanalia nje nikamwambia kwamba nitapambana niko sawa. The person who took my phone told me don't worry brother utapona uko sawa. Ehe uh-huh, alimwambia hivyo. <laughs> he took the phone and told me try to stand. Akachukua akaniambia jaribu usimame. When I stood wakati niliposimama akaniambia ah unaweza simama brother utapona. 
Yoyo. <laughs> so I, I, I took that as a lesson later in life. Because they were preparing me to do something. From uh, Kiseria up to here, you Kutoka, must be dedicated to come here every Sunday. Hadi hapa, lazima uwe, sana mali hapa. And initially I saw pastor praising me, you come from Kiserian. Even the pastor last week, he mentioned my name there. You come from Kiserian. <laughs> I do that because I've discovered my identity. I, I find really peace to be in the house of the Lord. The way things were happening in my views right now, they are not happening anymore. Maybe they, uh, the, the, the person of Jesus wanted to prepare me to be where I am at the moment. Moment. So it is your priority, your objective as a Christian to identify your identity. Let us see what Jesus did, especially when he was starting his mission. One day on a Sabbath day, Jesus went to the synagogue in Nazareth, his own village. He was given a scroll of prophet Isaiah. He opened the place where it is written the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor he has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord that is in Luke chapter 4 verse 18 to 19 the passage was very relevant as it spoke to the situation that the people had by then. The passage I've just read a while ago was very relevant to the people Jesus was speaking to. You know, these people had expected a Messiah. But they were looking for a political Messiah. Who would free them from harsh Roman rule? But was that the role of Jesus? Jesus came to establish or bring good news to the poor. Yes, kuleta injili kwa wale maskini. And to ensure those who are in captivity are no longer captives. Na kwa kisha kwa wale wafungwa, si wafungwa tena. But I want to tell you. When Jesus was speaking this way, yes, people were very happy. Watu sana. But the, when they realized that he's speaking about himself, as the Messiah sent by God, Kama Messiah na mungu, they were very, very annoyed. Some said, is this, is this not Joseph's son? How can he claim to be the Messiah? How can he claim to be the son of God? But indeed, Jesus was the son of God. So they had to accept because he was the son of God. The second instance where we should learn how to identify our identity when Jesus was calling the first disciples especially the encounter with Simon Peter which I heard pastor saying earlier today they had done fishing all the night but they had caught nothing so when Jesus uh, finished teaching he went to Peter akamwambia shusha nyavu shusha nyavu akamwambia cast your net shusha nyavu and what happened kitu gani kilitendeka abundance of fish was collected wingi wa samaki ulipatikana and even peter said peter akasema peter said go away akamwambia nenda mbali i am a sinner mimi ni mwenye dhambi i am a sinful man mimi ni mtu mwenye dhambi but jesus told him from today 
you will be fishers of men. Utakuwa mvua wa wanadamu. I remember in our Sunday school. Nakumbuka katika Sunday school yetu. But I told you we were forced. Nilikuwa nakwambia kwamba tulikuwa tukisukumwa. We were singing I will make you I'm not a good singer. You can sing I will make you fishers of men. I will make you fishers of men. Fishers of men. Fishers of men. I will make you fishers of men if you follow me. Thank you very much for helping me. Sana kwa kunisaidia. Fishers of men if you do what? Unaponifuata. If you follow me. So there is a condition. Kwa hivyo kuna masharti. Those who teach English like me English literature. Wale wanaofunza fasihi ya Kiingereza kama yeye. We call that one a conditional sentence. Tunaita kwamba sentence yenye masharti. It has some conditions that must be fulfilled. Ina masharti lazima yatimizwe before you become a fisher. Kabla uwe mvua wa watu. But uwe mvua wa watu. Thank you very much our interpreter. Ah, thank you very much. That is the second instance meaning you have to do something Lazima ufanye kitu the Lord ile Mungu to appear in your life adhirika katika maisha yako guide your life aelekeze maisha yako transform your life badilishe maisha yako take you to the right direction akupeleka kuelekeza katika njia iliyo bora yes i i hate my name collins aha nachukia neno jina langu collins because my mother tells me kwa sababu mama huniambia i was born in maseno mission hospital nilizaliwa kule maseno katika hospitali ya wamishenari and my mother was a primary school teacher na mama alikuwa mwalimu wa shule ya msingi she had uh, been rewarded with uh, that uh, collins dictionary alikuwa ametuzwa na ile dictionary there is a ya small collins. dictionary called collins i yeah, hope you have seen that dictionary kanaitwa collins <laughs> and my mother was uh, like a hebrew woman yes Eh, Somebody mamanga, said last week if I'm not wrong mwanamke muebrania eh mamanga alikuwa kama mwanamke muebrania yeah they give birth very fast eh wao wanazaa mapema sana Be, before wale watu wa, wa farao wakuje eh kabla wanapata mtoto ashatoka amen so she did it very fast alifanya hivyo haraka sana sasa mimi nikaanguka karibu na ile dictionary alikuwa anasoma uh-huh. alianza kujifungua kama anasoma dictionary uh-huh. eh very uh-huh. unique she tells me uh-huh. And I think she's not lying. So the mzungu in the hostel because we were mission hospital then. Mzungu pale katika hospitali told my mother no need of looking for a name. Akamwambia mama hamna haja kutafuta jina. Your son is at the summit of the dictionary. Kijana wako hako tu hujui ya dictionary ambayo unasoma. So they named me Collins. Sasa jina likawa Collins. That's why I'm Collins. Hivyo ndivyo naitwa Collins. Is that my identity? Je, hiyo sio kitambulisho yangu? Uh, if you properly go to school, unapoenda shuleni, you will say that's a eurocentric mind. Utasema kwamba hayo ni mawazo ambayo ya kutoka kule Europa. Because I was named because I went closer to the dictionary. Kwa sababu nilipewa jina kwa sababu nilikuwa karibu na dictionary. And the name Collins again is eurocentric anyway. Na jina hili Collins pia linatoka kule Europa. Yeah, but that is not my identity. That's the message I'm trying to say. Lakini hiyo sio kitambulisho changu. But God transforms. Lakini Mungu hubadilisha. The name may not be very significant. Jina huenda lisiwe na thamani zaidi but what we do lakini kinacho tunafanya becomes very significant inakuwa kitu cha thamani so uh, these people were transformed the fishers including our uh, brother Simon Peter watu hawa wavuvi walibadilishwa pamoja na Petero and even pastor said earlier even those who are nearby hata mchungaji akisema wale waliokuwa karibu they came together to help in pulling the net walikuja karibu kusaidia kushusha kuvua hii samaki and finally they followed jesus na baadaye wakamfuata yesu and they were transformed to be other beings na wakabadilishwa kuwa viumbe tofauti and they started living a different life wakaanza kuishi maisha tofauti they started prophesying the ability of the messiah wakaanza kutabiri mambo ya mesia and if you study the bible very well una unapoangalia biblia vizuri realize that these people are the one who advanced the work of Jesus Christ after Jesus ascended to heaven. Utagundua kwamba hawa watu ndio waliopanua kazi ya Mungu Yesu alipopaa kwenda mbinguni. Simon Peter and the rest. Petero na wengine. So Jesus is our Lord here. Yesu ni bwana wetu hapa. We must discover his lordship. Lazima tugundue ukuu wake. Once you discover his lordship. Unapogundua ubwana wake, you will realize your identity. Utagundua ama utatambua kitambulisho chako ni kipi. And you will do according to the will of God. Na utafanya kulingana na mapenzi ya Mungu. Jesus Christ. Yesu Kristo. Was born through the power of the Holy Ghost. Alizaliwa kupitia kwa nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu. He later lived a life that was righteous before Akaishi God. Akaishi maisha utakatifu na haki. He later died and resurrected akafa akafu 
Ah. He lives now at the right hand side of God. So the lordship of Jesus Christ is the real lordship. The other one we don't want to condemn it but we don't see the ability of God in that particular life. So you should realize that Jesus Christ that we praise and worship is a real son of God. And he can transform life because he lived a good life. We are called Christian because we need to be like Christ. But we are human beings. We are taught many things that we can do so that we try to live like Jesus Christ. One day Jesus was uh, talking to his disciples. That is in Luke chapter 9 verse 18 to 27. From their missionary tour, the disciple knew who people said Jesus was. Some thought he was John. I'm referring to John the Baptist. Others thought he was Elijah. Yet others thought that Jesus was a great prophet. Although many people including his disciples knew that he was not an ordinary person. They did not understand his true identity. So Jesus wanted to find out if the disciples knew his identity. In verse 20, that is Luke chapter 9 verse 20. Maybe, maybe my interpreter can read that in Swahili. Luke chapter 9 verse 20. Nanyi mwasema ya kwamba mimi ni nani? Petero akamjibu akasema, ndiwe Kristo wa Mungu. 21 akawaonya, akawakataza, wasimwambie mtu neno hilo. But who do you say that I am? Je, nyinyi mwasema mimi ni nani? He asked this question. Akauliza swali hili. Because the time had come for him to go to Jerusalem. Kwa sababu wakati ulikuwa umewadia wa yeye kwenda Yerusalemu. He to fulfill God's plan of saving mankind. Alipokuwa atimize kazi ya Mungu ya kumuokoa mwanadamu. And he knew very well. Na akajua vizuri kwamba. If the disciples did not understand him. Ta wanafunzi hawakumuelewa. It would mean nothing. Ingeonyesha hata hauna aina maana. His preaching will be useless. Kwamba mafundisho yake yangekuwa na udhamini. So they were to understand his identity as the Christ of God in acknowledgement in acknowledgement Jesus Jesus then explained to them the nature of his uh, uh, mission. And he told them the son of man must suffer. He must suffer many things. He would be rejected by the chief priests, the scribes, and the Sadducees. But, but not this finally, he will be killed and finally he will be raised from the dead. And that is exactly what happened. And he did it for us. That's why we go through so many things. But we should remember that Jesus is our Lord and Savior. And he is there to transform our lives. But I gave you a condition. If we obey him. If we follow his guidelines. If we follow his teaching. If we do according to his will. Then we shall go to heaven. Really we shall go there. I like our, our apostles so much. That's why I come. I really I am a very controversial controversial figure. Mimi ni mtu ambaye si rais wewe kunishawishi. Even my wife told me you are wearing a suit on Sunday. Aha, hata mke akamwambia wewe umevaa suti leo Jumapili. That is a fact this morning and I said I have a suit akasema aki wewe pastor imbumbu yake anamuita hivyo. Ehe. Akasema wewe pastor imbumbu yake amekuweza. Wewe wewe pastor amekuweza. Uh, because I look at things in many, many perspectives. Even when I used to go to church, nowadays I think I'm changing because when a preacher is teaching, I will analyze is this is the message really palatable with me? And is that message going to help me? I have gone to church even once upon a time. Let me say once upon a time. 
and I left the church before the end of the service because I told them the, the message was not helping me. But I think that was because of how I was there. But when I listen to his teaching, especially depending on the Lord, I really see sense in what he teaches. I suffered the accident and I suffered so much at my back. Although there was no fracture, there was no dislocation. But I suffered so much. When I was listening to him as he preaches, just in my house before I came here, he said, Unalilia nani? My mother and my father are still there. And I told you they are wonderful preachers. But he said, If you are a man, you have a wife. Uwezi kulilia mama yako. Uwezi kulilia mama yako. Uwezi kulilia baba yako. Nilogolea papa wote awe. Lilia Mungu. Ndiranya sai. Alisema lilia Mungu. Ndiranya sai. And I think that message was very important in my life. Na ujumbe huu ulikuwa wa maana sana katika maisha yangu. And I believed this is the true gospel that we expect. Na nikaamini kwamba hii ilikuwa injili ambayo nilitarajia. And when I came here I saw that Practically, and I believed this is the true message. And that's why I'm still here actually. That's why I'm still here. I've done comparative religion, Pastor. I have a diploma actually in theology. And if you go to school so much, especially in uh, uh, spiritual matters. You, you are likely to digress. You are likely to, to go out of the real way. Because you compare other documents with the documents of God. In fact, they will tell you Mount Sinai was not Mount Sinai. The Red Sea was not the Red Sea. We call it the Sea of Reeds, but they change the Red Sea. Now, if you study history properly, you say that the children of Israel led by Moses, they crossed the sea. But those of Pharaohs did what? They, were, they drowned, isn't it? But history will say something else. We don't have empirical evidence to prove that these people were carried by water. We need to see some evidence of bones, chains, uh, chariots, etc. But historians they say they have never seen. That's why I'm telling you if you go to school so much on theology. And you don't see the supremacy of God and the power of the Holy Ghost. It is very easy to digress. And to do other things and ignore the word of God. I also have something to show you that you should know your identity. Saul, as he was going to persecute Christians in Damascus, he never knew the lordship of the Lord. So in the book of Acts chapter 9 verse 3 to 19, we can read verse 18 to 19. Tunaweza Matendo ya mitume 9 hadi 19 inasema hivi. Mara vikaanguka machoni pake vitu kama magamba, akapata kuona, akasimama, akabatizwa. 19. Akala chakula na kupata nguvu akawa huko siku kadha siku kadha wa kadha pamoja na wanafunzi walioko Demeski. I've decided to read the tail end of that story. Nimeamua kusoma mwisho mwisho hiyo hadithi. When somebody was sent to restore his sight. Wakati mtu alipotumwa kuokoa macho yake. Exactly. So yeah. as Saul was coming near the city of Damascus. Paul alipokuwa anakaribia Demeski. Suddenly a light from the sky flashed around. 
Amwanga kutoka mbinguni ukakuja kwa katika macho yake. And he could not see. Na hangeweza kuona. And if you read the story, unaposoma hadithi, there was a sound asking why are you persecuting me? Kakuwa na sauti ilikuwa kwa mbona unani Tesa. And later Ananias was sent to restore his sight at the tail end of that story. Na hatimaye Anania kamtuma akatuma kumuokoa. And he started preaching the word of God. Na akaanza kuhubiri neno la Mungu. He did a lot Apostle Paul. Ah, mtume Paulo alitenda mengi sana. If you have studied the Bible you realize he did a lot the letters he wrote. Kama umechambua Biblia kuna barua nyingi sana zilizoandika. He wrote many letters to many people of the world about Jesus Christ. Aliandika barua nyingi kwa watu wengi kuhusu Yesu Kristo. Even the teaching that we had in the morning. Hata mafundisho tuliyofunzwa asubuhi was actually originating from Paul's teaching. Eh chanzo chake kinatokana na Paulo. The unity of the church. Moja wa kanisa. Like your body. Ah kama mwili wako. All organs are very important. Viungo vingine vyote ni vya maana. All of them are very important. Yote ni vya maana. Ukiumia kidole unafikiri heri ingekuwa mkono. Uh-huh. But you realize ukiumia mkono tena unasema heri ingekuwa hapo. Uh, yeah. eh? All organs are very significant Viungo in the church. Viungo vyote vina dhamana katika mwili. So all of us are very important because we are the church. Sisi wote ni wa maana kwa sababu tuko kanisani. And the Paul still teaches of different gifts given in the church. Na Paulo ananena kwa karama mbalimbali ambazo ziko kanisani. And I thank God that pastor is uh, giving us opportunity to say one or two according to what you have as a gift from Nashukuru God. Nashukuru Mungu kwa sababu Mtume ametupa nafasi ya kunena moja mbili kila ambacho ulicho nacho kuhusu Kristo. That's why I said talking before here is extremely unique. And iposa nikasema kusimama hapa ni jambo lisilo la kawaida. I can tell even my colleagues will be surprised if they see this video. Nawaambia marafiki zangu wakiona video hii watashangaa sana. They will be extremely surprised. Watashangazwa zaidi. They will say what is happening? Nasema nini kinaendelea? In fact others I'm very sure they'll tell me it's the accident. Wengine wakasema labda watasema labda ni ajali. Who jamai is that? Pastor pray for me. Pastor tuombe. So that they don't say it's the accident once I get another car. Wasije wakasema kwamba ni ajali. Lakini inaweza kuwa ukweli because nilikuwa nilisikiliza pastor kitambo nikiwa hata kwa gari. Ha. Na siku kuja siku ingia hivi. Mm. Na nilikuwa napita hapa juu. Yeah. Nimepita hapa sana. Mm. You know when I was leaving Uh, my, my lecturer was walking on foot and I'm driving I felt very bad <laughs> Lecturer wake alikuwa anatembea kwa miguu na yeye anaendesha gari alihisi vibaya sana Why are we going to school? Kwa nini tunaenda shuleni? That, that's how my mind was Hivyo ndivyo akili yangu ilikuwa I didn't know why why go to school with so many papers but you have nothing Eh hey, ninaenda kwa nini naenda shule unaenda shule na karatasi nyingi vyeti vingi na hauna kitu But God has his plan kini Mungu ana mipango yake. You don't know even why he is walking. Unjui kwa nini anatembea. So we learn is a process the way pastor said. Ni hatua vile Mungu amelipanda jana. We learn we realize why things are happening the way they are happening. Tunaposoma tunajifunza ni vitu ni kwa nini vitu vinatendeka jinsi vinavyoenda. We also tendeka. identify the plan of God in our lives. Tunajitambuliwa tunatambua mpango ya Mungu katika maisha yetu. And God is always there to ensure we are successful. Na Mungu yuko pale kuhakikisha kwamba sisi tumefanikiwa. So Paul taught many things. Paulo akafunza mambo mengi. And I want to conclude by saying now the qualities of people who have identified themselves. Nataka kutamatisha kuambia kwa wale ama tabia za wale watu ambao wamejitambua. Qualities of people who have identified their identities. Tabia za watu ambao wametambua kitambulisho chao. They have a new life in Jesus Christ. Wako na maisha mapya katika Kristo Yesu. Let us check Romans chapter 5 verse 1 to 5. Tuangalie Warumi 5:1 hadi 5. I wish I had somebody reading the one in English verse by verse and the other one reading the one in Swahili. Ngepata mtu ambaye atatusomea katika Kiingereza na mwingine asome katika Kiswahili. Pastor Felix you can read for us the English one. Warumi 5 Pastor Felix and Pastor Felix is a good man is guiding me time and again. Even today he told me make sure you do the right good thing. Eh eh huwa ananiongoza ananielekeza ananiambia kwamba hakisha kwamba umefanya kitu ambacho kinafaa. I told him I'm a teacher and I know what we call audience analysis. Eh eh nikamwambia kwamba mimi ni mwalimu ninaelewa kile kinaitwa usikivu wa watu. You don't tell people to buy a Mercedes when they can buy only a tuktuk. Eh huwezi ambia watu wanunue Mercedes ili hali wanaweza wakanunua tuktuk. You study the environment. Unaangalia mazingira. Pastor Felix Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5 verse 1 to 5 and then read for us chapter uh, verse 1 then you read us read for us chapter 1 in Swahili yes yeah, let's and, proceed and then Romans chapter 5 verse 1 the bible says therefore since we have been justified through faith we have peace with god through our lord jesus christ amen verse 1 uh 
uh, warumi tano moja basi tukiisha kuhesabiwa haki itokayo katika imani mm-hmm. na muwe na amani kwa Mungu kwa njia ya Bwana wetu Yesu Kristo amani kwa Mungu kwa njia ya Bwana wetu Yesu Kristo verse 2 amen verse 2 through whom we have gained access by faith into the grace in which we know we now stand and we have, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God ambaye kwa yeye tumepata kwa njia ya imani kuifikia neema hii ambayo mnasimama ndani yake kwa imani kwa imani the way our first teacher said tumepata neema hii uh-huh. na, kufu, na kufurahi katika tumaini la utukufu wa Mungu uh-huh. amen now three now only not only so but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces uh, perseverance Uh, wala si hivyo tu ila na mfurahi katika dhiki pia ukijua ya kuwa dhiki kazi yake ni kuleta saburi amen for perseverance character and character hope the, let us go back to verse 3 pastor felix sorry tarejee yes, um, um, mstari wa 3 yes verse 3 not only so but we also rejoice in our suffering because we know that suffering Uh, produces perseverance suffering produces perseverance eh yeah. uh, diki uleta saburi suffering produces or leads to perseverance uh-huh. uvumilivu tuna uwezo wa kuvumilia yes. ndio baada ya kuumia kwa matukio mengi sana maishani yes uh-huh. perseverance produces character perseverance will produce character and character hope and character will bring hope and hope does not disappoint us and hope will not disappoint us because god has poured and out his love unto our hearts yes. by the holy spirit by the holy spirit whom he has given us yes verse 5 I mean, have you read verse 5 yes yes no. please finish in swahili na kazi ya saburi ni uthabiti wa moyo na kazi ya uthabiti wa moyo ni tumaini msari wa 5 na tumaini halitayarishi kwa maana pendo la Mungu limekwisha kumiminwa katika mioyo yetu na Roho Mtakatifu tuliyepewa sisi. So you can see the suffering and Saint Paul suffered a lot again. Unaona Paulo alipitia mambo mengi machungu sana. That's why he was able to teach this message. Hivyo ndivyo alikuwa na uwezo wa kufunza somo hili. So the best way of learning I think is suffering. Njia nzuri ya kujifunza ni kupitia mateso. So if you go through suffering be sure that there is a a a a cloud ahead if you are in a desert unapopitia mateso elewa kwamba kuna wingu mbele yako unapokuwa katika nyika and is an optimistic uh, cloud na ni wingu lile ambalo lina matumaini wingu la matumaini amen bwana asifiwe amen So that is life that is life all these things we go through hayo ni maisha haya mambo yetu tunayopitia is a process of leading us to the direction that the lord wants ni hatua ya kutuelekeza mahali ambapo mungu anataka and god is always preparing everybody who can listen na mungu anatayarisha kila mtu ili akaelewe if you can listen to the message of god iwapo naweza elewa ujumbe huu wa mungu you will understand why you went through that suffering utaelewa ni kwa nini umepitia shida hizi zote there is a, 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 a boy who had cancer kuna kijana mmoja aliyekuwa na saratani and uh, he was the only boy he was the only boy in the family with cancer na yeye alikuwa mtoto wa kipekee katika hiyo nyumba and the people were ask actually the father was asking why do you think you have cancer na baba akamuuliza je wafikirie ni nini ni kwa sababu gani uko na saratani the child was really suffering kijana alikuwa anaumia sana but he told the father akamwambia baba i have cancer nina saratani so you so that you all kwa sababu ili nyinyi nyote you can learn mnaweza jifunza the power of god nguvu ama uwepo wa Bwana so i will die for you to receive the salvation that is expected in this family nitakufa ili nyinyi mupate wokovu na yutajika katika familia hii and he was a small boy na alikuwa mtoto mdogo sana so this suffering we go through in our families kwa hilo yale machungu na aliyopitia katika familia is a preparation of a good future ni kutayarisha tu wewe kwa hatima iliyo bora young people make sure you make the right decision wale vijana hakikisha kwamba umekuwa na uamuzi bora i hope you had a shot you do have a shot ni nalo uh, i wanted to do an experiment nilikuwa nataka kufanya experiment fulani but i think it cannot work well lakini nafikiri haitafanya vizuri ama if you start buttoning Una, unapoanza kuweka vifungu hivi and you miss the first battle na unakosa shimo la kwanza the other buttons will go in the right way vifungu vingine vitaenda 
you wa, miss the first battle maybe you start with the second hall unapokosa shimo la kwanza then you uh, you button up to the summit up to the top unaweka vifungu hadi pale juu in between it will be in order hapa katikati itakuwa sawa but at the tail end lakini pale juu there will be a problem kutakuwa na shida go and try that at home nenda ujaribu kule it's a very simple experiment ni ni hali ya kawaida zaidi so young people if you make a mistake at a certain stage of your life when you are young unapofanya makosa kama wewe ni kijana unapofanya makosa katika hali yako ya may appear to be very good Mambo yanaweza yakawa mazuri. As you enjoy life. Unapoendelea kuishirikia very many things in very many years. Unapofanya mambo kwa miaka mingi. But the effect will come later in life. Lakini madhara yatakuja baadaye maishani. So make sure you make the right choice. Hakisha umekuwa na uamuzi bora. And make the right decision. Na ukuwe na uamuzi wa Identify your identity at the tender age. Chambua kitambulisho chako katika miaka ya uchangaji. From the teaching that we receive time and again here and everywhere. Kwa mafunzo tunayopata kila wakati hapa na kwingine. Paul still teaches. Paulo bado anafundisha. Those identified to God. Wale ambao wanahusishwa na Mungu. Must have absolute love. Lazima wawe na upendo. Should not pay evil with evil. Wasilipize ubaya kwa ubaya. Must not revenge. La, wasilipize kisasi. That is Romans chapter 12. Hawa ni Warumi 12. Verse 9 Sarwa 9 verse 17 17 verse 18 18 you can read the entire of that text unaweza soma huo wote you will see those who have identified themselves in Christ utaona wale wanaojitambulisha na Kristo are expected to do kila ambacho wanatarajiwa kufanya in philippians chapter 4 verse 8 wa filipi 4:8 The Bible says Biblia inasema the teaching of St Paul again kwa mafundisho ya Paulo tena fill your minds jaza mawazo yako with those things that are true na wale mambo ambayo ni mazuri those things that are noble kale mambo ambayo yako na dhamana those things that are right kale mambo ambayo yana uhaki those things are pure yale ambayo ambayo ni yana uhaki ndani yake those things that are lovely yale ambayo ambayo yana upendo ndani yake those things that are honorable na vile vitu ambavyo vina heshima that is the characteristics hizo ndizo tabia of a person who has a true identity hizo ndizo tabia ambazo mtu za ule mtu ambaye ako na kitambulisho cha ukweli especially the true identity in jesus christ kitambulisho cha ukweli hasa katika kristo yesu so brethren kwa hivyo wapendwa you need to identify your identity lazima utambue kitambulisho chako and do the right thing na kufanya jambo linalofaa we have many people teaching us time and again kuna watu wengi wanatufunza mara kwa mara they teach us the true way of Christ. Wanatufunza njia ya haki ya Kristo. Be very good listeners. Wewe uwe msikilizaji mzuri sana. In fact when I came to this church, jambo la kushangaza nilipokuja kanisani hapa. I just wanted to sit somewhere behind. Nilitaka nikae tu kule nyuma. I don't like wearing suits because I suffer in suits every day. Eh sipendi kuvaa suti kwa sababu kila siku niko katika masuti. I just wanted to be behind there listening to Pastor Imbumbu Yeka they call him that way. Nilitaka tu nikae pale nyuma nikisikiza mchungaji Imbumbu Yeka. My son tells me unaenda kwa imbumbu yeka. Hata mtoto wangu niambia unaenda kwa imbumbu yeka. Namwambia ninaenda one day utaenda kumsalimia. Ninaenda siku moja utaenda kumsalimu. Eh yeah, so I wanted to stay there because in literature we say a good speaker is a good listener and a good listener is a good speaker. Nilitaka nikae pale kwa sababu katika fasi tunasema msikilizaji mzuri a uh, ni mnenaji mzuri na mnenaji mzuri ni msikilizaji mzuri but i was surprised i was given such an honor to speak before you lakini nilishangazwa sana kwa sababu nimepewa nafasi kama hii kunena mbele yako and therefore because god has spoken through his scriptures na kwa sababu mungu amenena kupitia kwa maandiko haya let us try to implement that wacha tujaribu kuweka katika matendo you have a good life uishi maisha mazuri you will be successful utakuwa na ufanisi your life will be straight maisha yako yatakuwa yamenyoka and god will always direct your path na Mungu ataelekeza hatua zako. I want to finish by reading Ephesians chapter 6. Nataka nimalize kwa kusoma wa Efeso 6. Verse 23 to 24. Wa Efeso 6:23. 23 hadi 24. Read for us in Swahili. Wa Efeso 6:23-24. Yoni mstari miwili ya mwisho pale. Yes. Efeso 6:23-24. Amani na iwe kwa ndugu na pendo. Samani. Amani na iwe kwa ndugu na pendo pamoja na imani zitokazo kwa Mungu Baba na kwa Bwana Yesu Kristo mstari wa 24 na, na, na neema na iwe pamoja na wote wampendao Bwana wetu Yesu Kristo katika hali ya kutokuharibika 
The, the first speaker said that you should identify your tribe. Menaji wa kwanza alisema kwamba lazima utambue wewe ni wa uko gani. And he was she wasn't meaning tribe as in a tribe like the tribe lazima in Kenya. Na hakuwa anamaanisha ukoo kulingana na vile tuko katika history. You must identify where you originate from I mean, on matters God. Lazima ujitambulishe pale ambapo unatoka kwa maneno ya Mungu. So when Paul teaches and is finishing his letter. Wakati Paulo anafundisha na baadaye anamaliza. He tells people. Anaambia watu. May God the Father Wacha bwana Mungu wetu and the Lord Jesus Christ na Yesu Kristo give to all Christian brothers and sisters awape wapendwa wote wa Kristo peace and love amani na upendo with faith pamoja na imani may God's grace wacha neema ya Mungu be with all those who love our Lord Jesus Christ iwe na wale wote wampendao Kristo Yesu with the undying love na ule upendo wa ajabu. Have you heard the condition? Je, umeona masharti? Have you heard the condition? Je, umesikia masharti? Those who love Jesus Christ. Wale wampendao Bwana wetu Yesu Kristo. May the God's grace be with all those who love our Lord Jesus Christ. Neema na iwe pamoja na wote wampendao Bwana wetu Yesu Kristo. Remember in those land. Kumbuka katika zile enzi, we have the Gentiles and the Jews. Kuna wale wa mataifa na wale wa Yahudi. And Jews knew that the Lord will always be on their side. Na Wayahudi wakajua kwamba Bwana atakuwa kila wakati upande wao. In the other side. Si kule kwingine. But Peter says Lakini Petero anasema Samahani uh, so, uh, St Paul says Paulo anasema that those who love Christ kwa wale wampendao Kristo muwe na neema ya Bwana Amen na mufaje mambo kulingana na uh, matakwa ya Mungu Amen na Mungu ukifanya vile atafadikisha mambo yako Amen Mimi nina imani sana hivyo mm. I am like William Ruto I've never started something that failed e, Mimi ni kama rais sijawahi anza kitu na kika <laughs> nikakosa kitu mimi we will say mugala muwe lakini haki yake mpe. Mpe. Amen. Hata kama mnaweza sema ako hivi lakini hajawahi anguka kitu chochote ambacho alitisha. <laughs> that is a very very smart person. <laughs> yeah? Any seat including Tatol Deep chairman. Yeah. Kama alitisha lazima alipata. And that is to go and do your research. We'll Enda ufanya utafiti na utafiti. He has successfully uh, access to power any seat that he requested for amefanikiwa kwa njia yoyote kuingia katika ufa, uh, katika kiti ambacho so alitaka personally i believe when i start something mimi mwenyewe ninaamini kwamba ninapoanzisha kitu i will always work hard to ensure it's successful nitahakisha kwamba nimefanikiwa even here in kenyata i said i paid for myself by the way hata hapa kenyata mimi mwenyewe nilijilipia karo my father never paid for me babangu hakulipa karo once i went to a diploma course he told me now go and succeed nilipoenda katika stashahada akaniambia nenda ukafaulu and i worked personally na nikafanya kivyangu and i succeeded na baadaye nikafanikiwa so have that same spirit eh kuwa na hiyo roho the only thing i was missing is what i'm doing now kile kitu ambacho nilikosa ni kile ambacho nafanya the guidance the proper guidance of the lord kuelekezwa na mungu but you know i was trying life because i had suffered the yoke of uh, of a certain doctrine nilikuwa ninajaribu maisha kwa sababu nilikuwa nimepitia mateso katika itikadi fulani but don't copy my life that was like lakini usiige mienendo ya maisha make the right decision kwa na uamuzi kwa kutoa your identity jitambue and do the right thing nafanya lililo bora may the peace of the lord wacha upendo wa Mungu amani ya Mungu and his grace pamoja na neema yake be with you iwe nanyi forever and ever milele na milele thank you very much amen asante sana safari baba ni ndefu sana safari baba ni ndefu sana Nione huruma nione huruma nione huruma nione huruma Maisha haya ni mazito sana nione huruma Maisha haya ni mazito sana nione